Hello class and thank you for joining me for lecture 6a. This is Healthy. We are going to be looking at pages 52 through 71 in your textbook. So if you will get that out um, and help me follow along with that. We are going to be looking at this lecture in four sections, okay, because there is a lot of information in it that I want to give to you. So lecture 6a, as I said, has four videos, parts one, part two, part three, and part four. So make sure that you um, continue to watch those because throughout that I'm going to be talking about assignments that are assignment for this week that is due. And, um, and it's a new concept, so I need you to really pay attention on how to do that, okay? So let's proceed on. We're going to begin to talk about our homework, which is 6B, our observation, which is worth 25 points, two hours again. Um, hang on just a second. Let me get this off here. So actually, we're going to be talking, I'm going to be introducing to you um, the ITER scale, which is the Infant Toddler Environmental Rating Scale, the revised edition. Um, <clears throat> you're going to be learning how to use that tool. This is the tool <coughs> that if you're in a classroom um, 30 months and under, that the kids now or the STARS people come in and begin to rate you. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that, but we're going to be specifically looking at diapering and toileting, health practices, and meals and snacks. These are only three of the 45 indicators that the STARS people rate a classroom on. So we're just dealing with three of the 45. So we're going to learn how to score each section. And I'm going to teach you that later on in the lecture, and I'm going to show you how. And then our homework is to actually score it by watching in a two-hour observation. And then we're going to actually write on the paper where we're scoring, giving details and reasonings for that scoring. And then you're going to actually write a paragraph on that. And then also the second paragraph should tell what did you learn from each scoring sheet? Okay, so that's two parts. You're going to give your reasoning for your scorings with details, and then you're going to tell me what did you learn from each scoring sheet. Not a hard assignment, but very, very um, informational for you to take in and to understand if you're working in a STARS program, and the star rated, how are the raters going to rate your classroom? So very different. Okay, so I have also provided you um, within Blackboard some handouts. Now these handouts are star approved, so some of them are in color, and I would prompt you very specifically to print those out and actually use them in your classroom. They're very, very um, colorful, number one, and they've got great information that's going to trigger your mind. How am I supposed to properly do hand washing, diapering, proper sanitizing, food portions, and especially safe sleep for infants? So just print those out because they've got great information. And like I said, they are colorful, so they'll go really nice in your classroom. All right, um, last week we talked about health and safety checklist and I had talked to one of the um, Kids Now Quality raters that help your directors get ready for a star rating um, visit. And she gave me, this is the 
child care health and safety checklist and it's also in those handouts and I wanted to just remind you that they look at this this is how they do a health and safety check in the classrooms so this might give you some really good information on what needs to be in your classroom and what they're going to be looking for those types of things to keep you health healthy and safety and being in those okay so it's just another resource for you this is the proper hand washing um, one that that I was talking about about how to fix the soap solution how to fix the rinse water how to fix the bleach solution um, because you know there is three compartments into and that's just proper hand washing but that is it's sanitizing you have to clean then you have to rinse and then you have to sanitize every time you go through that procedure of a diaper change or washing the tables or a sink or even a toilet these are the you spray the soap solution on then you rinse it with water and then you add the bleach solution that has to be on there two minutes now I will point out that you cannot use the same paper towel when you're doing this rin cleaning, rinsing, sanitizing procedure. A clean paper towel has to be used in the soap solution, in the rinse solution, and in the bleach. Okay, so you're going to be using three paper towels on every clean surface that you are cleaning, rinsing, and sanitizing. So we clean, we rinse, we sanitize. That's the proper way, and this will help you um, remember that. Okay, so your book starts out talking about providing nutritious snacks and meals on page 52. So I want to take you back to the regulations, um, and I want to point out some things that the regs say. First of all, food shall not be used for reward this is in the regs Miss Maria didn't make this up it's in the regs I actually today when I was putting your PowerPoint together said oh, used for reward I'd never seen that you know oh you've got you've had really good behavior let's go get us a cracker or an animal cracker I was breaking the regs I'm sure you guys have too but that is in the regs food shall not be used for reward used for discipline we can't say well you're not going to get a cookie because you've been bad or you're not eating snacks so you can go to bed we can't do that because we cannot withhold food <clears throat> withheld until all other foods are consumed so we can't even withhold cookies until all other foods are consumed um, and we cannot look at this we cannot food shall not be served while viewing electronic devices that means we can't even watch a movie and serve popcorn in our center now why would they make this terrible uh, well I'll tell you there's there's proper reasonings behind this first of all we don't want food um, to become an a reward for um, a goal because that really promotes obesity we don't want it to be used as, as a discipline technique because that's improper positive guidance and then obviously I really believe when I sat and thought about this today we emphasize positive guidance and so positive guidance wants to reward and place images in the brain that are going to cause good behavior so good behavior is learning how to be healthy mentally spiritually physically and emotionally so when you put in a person who is obese and is overweight then you are there's there's problems there there's emotional problems um, because they become emotional eaters there there's um, physical problems because they become overweight 
they don't have the discipline to exercise and we want them to do that and we don't want them to do it for food we want them to do it because they want to be healthy okay and eating while becoming a couch potato viewing electronic devices is those two just do not mix okay so we want children to know that it's okay to watch TV for a certain length of time but adding the reward of eating eating while that's happening is is not proper and it's not good for them and it's not a positive um, image that we need to place in their minds now if they go do it at home that's you know that's one thing but in our center we're promoting positive guidance so let's think of it like that okay all right so here's the US guidelines <clears throat> this came out in May 2002 and this is actually the kids poster and I put the um, hyperlink up there for you all to go you can click on that in the real PowerPoint that's there and it'll take you directly to that page so you can print this out and put it in your classroom so you see that we've got cereals breads and foods um, <clears throat> and then fruits and vegetables and milk cheese and yogurt meat fish and alternatives and others okay so we got these little numbers that go down because we should have six servings, four servings, three servings, two servings, and then others sparingly. Okay, now I would I would um, encourage you to really put this in your classroom where you eat. Okay, and when you're eating, begin to talk about the food pyramid and what they should be eating the combinations of foods it's very effective especially with preschoolers three and four and five year olds they really get into this and then this um, offers you the portions that need to be fed um, just to make sure that those portions are being served in your center not to scrutinize a director or a food person but according to the um, if they in, are involved in the food program they're going to have to meet these guidelines okay so also the Kentucky regulations on bottles um, um, your book starts talking about storing breast milk thaw, thawing breast milk and you can read all those <coughs> um, Please, but right now I'm just talking about pages uh, 50, 52 to basically 55. I'm going through the regs on what is that. So a single service, a bottle is a single service. That's what I'm pointing out. So it has to be stored. It has to be handled and dispensed in a sanitary manner. Sanitary manner meaning um, cleanliness, okay? The bottle can only be used once, and I will stress that to you. It has to be used once, and then it has to be cleaned, okay, or properly um, washed, rinsed, and sanitized according to health department regulations. So bottles shall be individually labeled. That means with the child's full name, first name, and last name. Um, they have to be properly refrigerated. Um, if, if the parents and they have to be prepared by the parent basically it doesn't say that in there but they have to be prepared uh, properly so if in fact they bring formula to the center or the center provides formula then that has to be dispensed according to the amount and then the water placed into the bottle um, at the proper amount of water that's needed for the formula okay so if they're not pre-made they do not have to be properly refrigerated however once the the formula and the water have been mixed with each other or the formula is just poured in there then the bottles do have to be properly refrigerated and that goes um, up against what the degree that the health department determines that it needs to be at 
um, to stay cold and I believe that is 36 degrees I'm, I believe that um, when the bottle is not being used it has to have the lid on it, it has to be covered so if it's in storage in the refrigerator or wherever it has to have a cover on it now it does not say that the cover has to have the individual's label on it but I do believe that I would go ahead and put the labeling on the cap as well as the bottle so then you can take the cap off and feed the baby but once the baby stops drinking you have to put the cap back on to set it there now it the bottle has to be consumed one hour from the time it has either been heated or removed from the refrigerator or prepared um, so one hour one hour that's it now when you go what I, we do at our center is immediately when that bottle is fixed and ready then we go to the baby's paper and we actually write the time that the bottle was fixed so that if in fact you get to go on break as a teacher or you leave for lunch or whatever whoever comes in and sees that bottle sitting there will know exactly when that bottle is no good anymore so that's how we keep each other working as a team of ensuring that we know what's going on um, with those bottles okay so that's very important one hour so milk servings milk has changed in the last these are new regs that have just come out um, so let's read through that a serving of milk shall consist of for kids that are 12 months and under they have to have breast milk or iron fortified formula for a child age birth to 12 months for children that are 12 months to 24 months we have to serve whole milk um, and that's because that whole milk helps develop brain we're developing a brain so we've got to ensure that children are drinking their milk but when they turn 24 months then the director has to switch in from whole milk and they have to do low fat or 1% or fat free skim milk for 24 months to school age now why did this come into effect because of obesity this is part of uh, Miss Obama's plan um, and you know people have said well they need that fat to um, push through their their development of their brains when they're actually younger and research does not support that um, that's that's basically an old-fashioned statement um, so research is saying you know because we've got so much obesity we're going to have to start teaching positive guidance eating that's what we're doing so formula or breast milk is provided by the parent it has to be properly labeled and prepared a child care center may participate in the child and adult care food program um, and if that is true then the center actually provides um, if they choose to the formula they can't produce they can't provide breast milk of course but they can provide the milk and the formula um, and the food a serving of bread shall consist of whole or enriched grain that doesn't have to be whole wheat bread but it can it has to say on the package that it's whole wheat or enriched grain and again that's just to ensure that they're not just eating total starch but it does have some good nutrients in it that we're wanting the children to learn to eat now I will tell you you know if you go from whole milk to skim fat free skim milk it's going to taste like you know you're drinking water and but we want it we want them to acquire that taste now that that's what milk literally tastes like and it's good 
Okay, so this is the end of part one, lecture 6A. Thank you so much for joining.